Uh, Shannon Ranch there, uh, that didn't surprise us at all either, Stewie. He, he left in uh, fifth position uh, yesterday, so Shannon Ranch get in in uh, second position. But more from Fink a little later on, back to Sunday. A little flock of uh, a regular carriage just flew past the front of the house. He got out, they just flew past here. <laughs> and we're at Catherine at Shady Lane, just uh, 30 kilometres, I suppose, away from Catherine Gorge. I didn't get on our boat for our cruise up the Catherine Gorge and look at all these bats, aren't they noisy? Can go fun. <laughs> There's the water down there and boats and things. We're just getting out on the water. Yeah, the entrance to the first gorge proper. First gorge is the widest and most vegetated of the 13 gorges in the system. Several species of catfish, black rim, super grim, archerfish, long toms. Stripey grunters. You'll be able to see a muddy stain on the walls. Yeah. That's about our water level rise during the wet season, where the water sits for most of the time. The average water level rise is about seven metres. Sedimentary rock was laid down here about 1,650 million years ago. Laid down by a massive river delta system which spread out over a large area and dropped tons and tons of sand. That sand then compressed to form one big sandstone block. Block stretches from Arnhem Land all the way down to Mataranka. About 25 million years ago, there was a bit of earth movement, a bit of a plate shift underneath this block, which lifted it up out of the ground. In doing so, it fractured it, broke it into lots of smaller blocks of sandstone. Now we are about to pass through the shallowest part of the second gorge. Butterfly Gorge, named so because it's got butterflies in it. Literally thousands of black and white crow butterfly up in that sub gorge there. Yeah, uh, 30 metres of water underneath us here. Uh, it's basically a Romeo and Juliet style story. You've got uh, a couple of Aboriginal kids, a bit of love, and of course, tragedy at the end. That's Jetta's mate. We're now at Mataranka, never never country here where Jeannie Gunn lived. Norm started reading We of the Never Never, so he's quite keen about the fact that here are some statues of Jeannie and her husband Enos. Beth and her dog Sue. That's better than the boy called Sue, isn't it? Oh, we were just standing here and then we heard a pop and a hiss and look at our tyre, it just decided to deflate. After having to go back to Catherine to get a new wheel and we've come now past Mataranka so we've moved on and we're at Elsie Cemetery which is where we have the Never Never characters or some of them have been buried. Jeannie Gunn is buried down in Melbourne where she returned from Elsie, I presume after her husband's death in 1902 or 3. He's buried here, he died of dysentery. See the bustard? There's the bustard. There he is. Hello bustard. Stay still. <laughs> so bloody funny. If John will give you room service, if you want to come up and stand beside me while I'm singing this song, you too can look bloody stupid like me. Thank you very much. And I'm going to sing a song with two wedge-tailed eagles on my hat. I don't often do this, you know. Look at that.
Anybody heard the Johnny Cash song, A Boy Called Sue? Oh, no. Yeah, I bet you haven't heard it finished this way before. And I bet you Johnny Cash never had to stand with two wet tailed eagles on his head either. <laughs> Three didn't leave much for my mom and me. Just this old guitar and an empty bottle of booze. I don't blame him because he ran and hit, but the meanest thing that he ever did was before he left, he went and called me Sue. I can tell by the scar on his cheek and his evil eye. Too big and bad and gray and old, I looked at him and my blood ran cold and I said, My name is Sue. How do you do? And now <laughs> He's dead. That is the Wild Wedge Tail Eagle Show, folks. We're on the Carpenteria Highway between Daly Waters and Cape Crawford. We're at Heartbreak Hotel at Cape Crawford. We had a steak sandwich and licking an ice cream. This is Karambarini Waterhole. About 60 kilometres south of, from Burrawoola. Look at that. We're looking for birds and we find a lizard. Way up to Bing Bong and to the Gulf. Only to be thwarted at the last minute by a mining lease. We've set up camp at King Ash. Lots of boats, lots of people, lots of hopeful fishermen. Very nice location. Here's our little camp, King Ash style. It's the 16th of June and we've left Boralula after getting fuel and we're on Savannah Way. And this, it's been pretty good track so far and we're just doing creek crossing. There's the creek on the way down. This is the Savannah Way where we're going through at the moment. Corrugation part here. It's a lovely spot for morning tea on a river that's the Foilshe, F-O-E-L-S-C-H-E, Foilshe, Foilshe River, beautiful river. And crossing the Foilshe River or whatever it is, crossing. Gosh, well we're on the way again after a lovely cup of tea beside the river. And Dennis on the side, a little bit of water over the road, not much. We're somewhere near Wollongarang and the topography has changed to steep Hill. We haven't got tarred road for a period. We are now in Queensland on the Savannah Way and Hell's Gate's 50, Damachi's is 130 and Burktown is 232 kilometres. We've made it to Hell's Gate Roadhouse. Oh, you did that just as so I clicked. Norm turned 60 this morning at Hell's Gate. Some lovely dogs down here waiting for their masters who I think are pigmen. I think they're pig dogs. They've got their coats on their their, their shields on their chest. Now he's 60. Hmm. I didn't even know you were there. Yeah, I was there filming. See, look. Yeah, no grey hair. No different. No yesterday. wrinkles. <laughs> if anything, he looks better. Hell's Gate Roadhouse for the camp last night. The airport sign. International and domestic arrival is the runway. Oh, he's going without me. <laughs> 